chemical rates measure the speed at which a reaction occurs. And we'll be going through some of the basics of rates here and contrasting them with equilibria because I think a lot of students get rate and equilibrium confused with each other. And so we'll go through the contrasts and how they relate to each other. So the first thing that you'll notice about rates is that for this generic reaction, A units of A plus B of B turns into C part C and D of D. Notice that the rate law is written as lowercase k, which is your rate constant for this reaction, times A to a power alpha and times B to a power beta. And so notice that we're only looking at the reactants because it's only the concentrations of the reactants that influence a rate. And also notice that we used alpha and beta rather than lowercase a and b because it's not always true that rate laws follow stoichiometry when you're looking at the order of them. Sometimes they do, which we'll get to in a second, but sometimes they may not, especially in complicated multi-step reactions. And so it's important to realize that whereas with equilibrium you always raise to the stoichiometric coefficient there, you don't always do that with rates. And so that's a common stumbling block for students when going through rate problems. Notice also that equilibrium involves looking at the concentrations of products raised to their stoichiometry over the concentration of reactants raised to theirs. And this is not true for rates. Rates do not consider the amount of product there. Now, how are these related? Remember that when you are at equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction will be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So rates and equilibria are somewhat connected. But when you're solving problems that involve rates, your job is to look at the concentrations or molarities of the reactants. And you have some k value that is a rate constant that is usually experimentally determined. Whereas equilibrium, you're looking at different factors. And remember that with equilibria, you can always raise to the stoichiometry. With rates, you sometimes can, but sometimes can't. Another thing about rates is that you usually only consider the initial rate of the reaction. And the reason for that is that as the reaction continues to move forward, you'll end up depleting some of these reactants. And so these numbers will get smaller and the rate will slow down. And so rates change over time. Equilibrium constants don't. Those always remain the same. Whether you are at equilibrium or whether you're not, the equilibrium constant will always remain the same. The rate will not and the rate tends to get slower as the reaction continues. And so you only consider the initial rate with most problems like this. The last thing to recognize is that alpha and beta are referred to as the orders of the reaction. So alpha is the order of the rate law with respect to reactant A, and beta is the order with respect to reactant B. And so it could be first order with respect to A, perhaps second order with respect to B. And if you add A, alpha and beta together, then you have the total order of the reaction. So if it's first order for A and second order for B, then the total order of the reaction is third order. And those are the major fundamentals of rates. And now we'll move in to the different ways rates can show up and how to reason through all of these different types of problems that involve rate laws and rate calculations.